Okay, so we've got our data for the Young's Modulus experiment. Now what I'm going to do is insert the data into my spreadsheet and that will calculate stress and strain for me and produce a graph of stress versus strain. And from that graph I can determine Young's Modulus. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to start off with this table over here. I've already inputted the original length of the wire. So that's in there, 1.392 metres. I need to insert my two diameter measurements. Now both of those were 0 0.28, so I'm putting those in there and my formula here is automatically converting these from millimeters into meters, so we're dividing by a thousand there. It's working out the average of those and then it's calculating the area in meters squared. So if I pull that up, hopefully that's visible, so pi times the average of these divided by a thousand, so I've converted them into meters there, raised to the power of two, so I'm squaring the diameter divided by four. So that's pi d squared over four gives you the area, cross-sectional area of my wire. That's coming out as 6.16 times 10 to the minus eight meters squared. So that is the first stage. That's the general information about the wire dealt with. Now my results go into this table here. You can see that I've put the first column in there. These are all the mass values. These are in grams. So they need to be converted into kilograms before I can work out the load, the force that was applied. So I divide all these by a thousand and then the mass in kilograms, multiply that by 9.8 and that will give me the load. So that, because the masses were already established, I've put those in there. And this is a formula that I just filled. So you can see, I've, hopefully you can see, this value divided by a thousand times 9.81. And then all I do once I've accepted that formula is fill that down like that. And it gives me all the load values here in Newtons. So that's the second column there. My extension values I need to insert in here. I'm inserting them in millimeters. The next column here divides by a thousand to turn them into meters. Let's put those in there first. So we get 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 0 0.9, 1 1.3, 1 1.7. So those are my extension values. These are then converted into meters. And now we get to the last two columns where I'm calculating stress and strain. So the stress will come out in newtons per square meter. I've already converted, well, the, the load is in newtons anyway, and the extension has been converted into meters. So, uh, and the area, of course, was in square, meter, square meters, so this will come out in newtons per square meter. If I open up that formula, what I'm doing here is I'm taking the load and I'm dividing it by the cross-sectional area of the wire, this is the average cross-sectional area. So each of these load values down here gets divided by the same value here. I've used a fixed data reference for that cell there. So as I fill this down, it'll keep dividing all of these load values by that. So if I click into this one here, you can see it's dividing that by the same cell. So that's my stress values for each of the loads that I applied. I am, of course, assuming that the cross-section array didn't change as the wire was extended. Reasonable assumption, there would have been a little bit of shrinkage, but not a great deal. So that's okay. And then the strain. To work out strain, we're dividing the extension by the length. Again, I need to use a fixed data reference for this cell here, so that all of my extension values here are always divided by the original length up there. So if I click in here, you can see there's the cell reference for the extension. This is the fixed data reference for the original length. So accept that, and then I just filled that down before. So each of those extensions, from those I have, convert, I have calculated the strain values. No units there. This extension is in meters. The length is in meters, the units cancel out there. As you know, strain is just a ratio of those length dimensions. 
So these are the two columns that I'm interested in for my graph. I'm going to plot stress against strain. So let's view the graph now down here. Right, so here we go. We have strain on the y-axis, stress on the x-axis. So these are my data plots. They've come up from that table, this, these two columns here. And I set my graph to automatically produce a trend line, line of best fit. So that is the line of best fit there. In order to determine Young's modulus from this, Young's modulus is stress divided by strain. So on the y-axis I have strain, but on the x-axis I have stress. So if I did y over x, that would give me strain over stress, which is 1 over the Young's modulus. It's the reciprocal of Young's modulus. So I, what I'm going to do is determine the gradient of the line, and then one divided by that will give me Young's modulus. This is, up here, the equation of that line. So, if I go into the format settings here, I've clicked on the line, and I've gone to the format settings, and that shows me some options for the trend line. So, it's a linear line, I, it's a straight line, and I've Tick the option there to show equation. So if I untick that and tick that again, you can see that the equation is disappearing. So if I untick that and tick that, so you can see that is the equation for this line here. That gives me 1.456 times 10 to the minus 11. That e to the minus 11 means times 10 to the power of minus 11. And that value is what I use to calculate Young's modulus. <coughs> So I've uh, pre-calculated for this, so now if I bring in my calculation here, the gradient is 1.456 times 10 to the minus 11, like I just showed you from there. Young's modulus is 1 divided by the gradient, so 1 divided by 1.456 times 10 to the minus 11 gives me 6.9 times 10 to the power of 10 pascals. So Young's modulus for this metal wire was 6.9 times 10 to the 11, 10 to the 10 pascals. The data book value was 1.1 times 10 to the 11 pascals. So you could work out a percentage difference for that. The experimental value minus the data book value divided by the data book value. Since there's a percentage difference, we're only really interested in the, the positive value of the difference. So you would just take the modulus of the top line of the experimental minus the data book value and divide it by the data book value multiplied by 100. That would give you the percentage difference so you can see how close you were. Um, so there we go, that's the analysis done and hopefully everything was explained clearly enough. If anything needs a little more explanation or a better explanation, then please do leave a comment below the video.